Hello everyone, hopefully you're enjoying the weekend. We not only have John Wick 3, great, great movie, as well as uh, Game of Thrones final episode later tonight. Uh, I believe an hour from now, so I should be able to get this video up and then watch it. But in any case, I have not done the tutorial for a little while, so I'm going to be doing a two for one today. Not only am I going to show you how to do CHD compression for the PCSX rearmed Neon Core, I'm also going to show you Open Bore. I have Hashi 2 CE 3.53, the latest version. I'm going to go to Modules, KMFD, Mod Hub. Then I'm going to go down to this special tab right here. And we have Open Bore and Drastic. You're going to want to download the Open Bore Core. Just download it. Do not install it from here. Just download it. Then once it downloads, it's going to go into your User Mods folder, in which you can simply go to Install Extra Modules, and then navigate to the same special tab that I just showed you on the Mod Hub. Right there along with Jurassic, install this, like you normally would any other HMOD. And once you have that installed, you simply uh, want to do this, and it is very, very easy to remember. Uh, remember, open bore, all you got to do is open the bore game and then add it as is. And uh, I would not recommend having compression enabled when adding, otherwise it would not work. So you want to have this disabled. I'm going to go to File, Add More Games As Is, and I'm going to go to the folder, which is my open bore test. And I'm going to take uh, Power Rangers Beats of Power. I'm going to extract it here real quick. And then I'm going to navigate into that folder specifically for the pack file. And I'm going to go into right now. It should be in the packs folder. And I'm going to add this pack file as is. And it is not case sensitive like some cores might be. Such as the GME core which runs uh, Nintendo music files, Super Nintendo music files and so on. Well, right here, if I look at the name of the extension here, is actually a lowercase p-a-k. It actually runs as a uppercase as well as a lowercase, but some cores will not work unless they are absolutely case sensitive, such as lowercase NSF for the GME core. I know it's a little bit complicated, but it would make sense if you're trying to run something and it does not work. So I'm going to add this game as is. Open. And then once that adds, I'm going to change the command line appropriately. And with the next HackG update, you're going to simply be able to add these, and it should have the command line automatically filled in with the uh, emulation core selector. So there we go. Right here, I'm just going to close this and do it manually. I'm going to go right here where it says bin forward slash pack, and I'm going to change this to bin forward slash open bore. And then I'm going to add the open bore prefix here real quick semicolon and do a quick uh, Google search. I should be able to find something. It doesn't really matter what. Per normal. Uh, right there. Beats of power. There we go. And we'll do another game real quick. Same uh, thing. Rinse and repeat. Uh, we'll go to that same folder. Uh, we'll do uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shell Shocked. We'll add that one. And we'll also add uh, Splatterhouse 1 Deception of the Mask. I'm a big Splatterhouse fan. Hopefully there's some blood in this game. And I have to say, uh, some games that are later on, like after 2014, may not necessarily work, but pretty much all the games that I've tested from 2014 and before worked exponentially well in my testing. So uh, we're going to do Splatterhouse real quick. I'm going to go to the pack folder again, add the pack file, and I'm going to see if this is uppercase or lowercase. It is uppercase, and again, it is not case sensitive in relation to this core. And I'm going to add that as is right now. And we'll have a few test games real quick. Close, uh, bin forward slash open bore. Same thing up here. Open bore prefix, semicolon. And then I'm going to Google for some art real quick. Whatever comes up, right there, that works. And then we're going to add the TMNT game. That'll be our third test example here. Pack again. I actually just watched the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles versus Batman animated movie that is a collaboration between Warner Brothers, and it is very, very cool, actually. There's more violent than I expected it to be. It's kind of amazing how some of these animated movies are actually better than live-action counterparts. So we're at a TMNT right now, and we got three test games. And I do like that when you add games to Hashi uh, versus the older Hashis, which would just mix it in alphabetically, these actually get added to the very, very top where you know exactly where they are temporarily. So we're doing uh, open board for this one. Same thing up here. And I'm going to Google for some art. 
And I'm going to add one more game. Because this is one I'm kind of curious about myself. Okay, we have uh, right there. This one I'm just kind of curious about. Because I've heard uh, funny things about it. I'm going to try doing the uh, Badass Babes demo. See if that loads up. Oh, hell with it. I'll do Metal Wall Slug Resistance too. Why not? So we got five test demonstration games here. And you can see this is incredibly easy to add. And I give personal thanks to uh, Mad Monkey and B.S. Leno. B.S. Leno helped out with the main user interface integration. So Metal Slug Resistance pack right here. See, this is very, very easy. I mean, third time's the charm, five time's the charm. Open bore, semicolon, Google for some art. Then we just have to add badass babes. There we go. I'm not really worried. I mean, many of these were on Dreamcast initially. I could even use the Dreamcast artwork if I so choose to. I'll just use that because it looks really incredibly cool. Then I'm going to add the final game here real quick. A Badass Babes demo. And again, not all these are guaranteed to work. I'm going to hope that uh, Badass Babes works because I've seen some videos of this in action. It's quite a funny game. It's also on Steam for those of you who uh, can't play it on Open Bore. And then we'll do the PlayStation conversion to CHD, which is going to be very, very brief. Okay, uh, Google for some art. Ah, oh, this will work. Okay, we got five games, and uh, sometimes I recommend there's a 99.5% chance the desktop command lines will save. Sometimes how it is, uh, bin forward slash pack, if you actually uh, sync or export these without close and hashy, there's a small, small chance that this open bore may still be pack in the desktop file. So sometimes I'll actually close and reopen it, but I'm just going to navigate to these right now. I'm going to do it my way. I literally just copy them to my drive. I'm going to go to the most recent modified ones and take all these five games right here and just copy them right to my games folder because that's how I do it. I don't really sync or export. I do everything manually. Hash your games. And I'm going to copy them directly to here. And while these are copied, I'm going to do the CHD thing. I'm going to take my... Uh, let's go to that same folder. I'm taking Ridge Racer, which is roughly 375 megabytes compressed. I'm going to extract it real quick. And uh, one thing to note is uh, there are multiple bins. The first bin is typically the ISO, and bins to and on would be the music files. I've done many, many ripping videos before, but right now I'm going to take this and uh, take this 375 plus megabyte game and uh, render it into a CHD that is only roughly, uh, should be about one megabyte in size if I remember correctly from when I've done this a while back. So I'm going to go to my course at release, go to the extras folder, uh, tools, PS1, uh, Actually, just CHD, man. I'm going to go to the 64-bit version because I'm running a 64-bit operating system. I'm going to copy and paste these two files, the batch file and the CHD, man, executable, right to this directory that it's extracted into. Now, I'm not really concerned about the other files. I only care about the first one for right now because I want to get this to a small size possible for ease of use and convenience on NAND internal flash memory on the NES and SNES classics. Because this is how we did it before USB host, uh, as some of my preordained videos used to dictate. I'm going to open up the Q file right here. I'm going to edit it. Now I'm literally just going to delete all of the other files other than the first binary file. So I'm going to have just uh, track one bin as the only file in the uh, Q file. And I'm going to save it. Now when I do the conversion, it is only going to convert the first bin into a CHD, which is a better compression format than eBoot. I'm going to go up to the batch file and double click it or right click and open it. And it's going to do the conversion. Bam! Should be done just like that. And I have a 1.11 megabyte file, which I'm going to copy over to the drive for a test perimeter. Uh, Hashi games. I'm going to use my uh, dummy folder method right now. And I'll go to my PlayStation 1 folder real quick. And I'll copy it there and I'll rename it so I know that I just converted it. Okay. I'll put a test on here so I know it's the proper one. Then I just need to boot up. And we'll test out these open board games as well as the Ridge Racer test. So I'm going to remove my drive safely right now. 
because I am running EXT4. I use uh, Linux file systems. I'm going to unmount it. It is always good to safely remove or unmount drives. And then I'm going to boot up the system and we're going to check these games out. Okay, I'm going to pause it while I get it booted up real quick. Okay, we are now booting up and we're going to do some test parameters with OpenBoard as well as the PlayStation Rearm update. We're going to check out the CHD compression as well as the variance between uh, some of the plugins that were added in the latest update. I'm going to do RetroArch UI from the main user interface. You can get this shortcut from the games tab on the game at the mod hub. Just like I got the open board core. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to go to low core. And then I'm going to go to the uh, Sony section here. And uh, there are four variants here. We have uh, three different plugins. We have Neon, Piops, Uni. I'm going to load Neon as the test perimeter first. And then I'm going to go to Low Content, Start Directory, and go to my PlayStation 1 folder. And we're going to verify that this uh, CHD compression worked. Go to the Ridge Racer uh, test game right there. Ridge Race Test CHD. And then we're going to load it, and it should open up just fine with the typical Galaga intro. We should be good to go in a second. Yep, works flawlessly. Very, very happy about the CHD compression. It is awesome. I've been uh, very, very uh, acclimated to this on the Genesis Plus GX core, as well as with the PCE Mendefin, uh core, as far as uh, running TurboGrafx CD games. But I'm going to show you something else incredibly cool right now. Uh, not right here with this game specifically, but we all know about the HD mode activate, right? I'm going to show you what I mean. I got off to a really bad start there. We could go into uh, a quick menu, options, and just pay close attention there. I'm going to go to uh, the enhanced resolution, and I'm going to turn uh, both of these on. Both of the enhanced resolutions on, and resume. And the game runs absolutely fine in HD. We've all known about this from my previous demonstrations in it. But I'm going to show you something very, very cool now. I'm going to load up uh, another game right now. And I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to turn it off real fast just so you see what I'm doing. I'm going to go turn the uh, enhanced resolution off. And I'm going to go to load another game. And this is going to be something that is actually going to be incredibly cool as far as running more HD games on your mini classics. Specifically the SNES and NES, which have lower spec than the PSC. So we're going to load R-Type Delta right now. I just passed it. And we're going to see what happens when I try running this in HD. We'll get in game real quick. On the PlayStation Classic, most games uh, run in HD with no problems whatsoever. But on the SNES and NES Classic, unfortunately, some games are more stubborn. So we'll get in game real quick and uh, we'll check this out. Doesn't really matter what name I have. Okay, we should be in game in a moment here. An incredible game. I'm really, really hoping they do our type final on the PlayStation Network for the PlayStation 4 sometime in the conceivable future. Maybe Dot Emu could get the rights to it as they've gotten rights to other Irem games. Okay, it's running fine without HD, but let's see what happens if I try to turn an HD mode activate on for this game. Everything's running fine. I'm going to go into uh, quick menu options. And we're going to turn that uh, enhanced resolution on. And resume. Really slow and choppy. This is not going to work at all. This is bad. Slow motion mode activate. Kind of like the NES Advantage playing Gradius on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. So I'm going to disable that right now. And I'm going to do another quick test. I'm going to turn these off real quick. And I'm going to go to low core. I'm going to go to the other Sony core with a different video plugin set. I'm going to go to POPS. Load content, and I'm going to load the exact same game I just did. And by the way, the POPS actually cleans up uh, graphical glitches for the uh, Metal Gear Solid cutscenes. So I'm going to uh, PS1 again. 
I'm going to load the exact same game, R-Type Delta. But I'm going to load it with the PF variant, which has that video plugin. And we're going to get in-game again, and we're going to check out HD mode activate, and then we're going to do our open board test, and hopefully all five games work. But pretty uh, awesome updates there, open bore and CHD support, plus better HD proximity for uh, the mini SNES and NES. Okay, let's get in game. Okay, let's check it out. Again, I really, really want to see Final Type, uh, Final uh, R Type show up. I mean, R Type Final, should I say? Such an incredible series. They really need to bring this back. Now, watch carefully what I do here. Game's running fine right now. I'm gonna go into the options again. And again, we are running the POPS uh, plugin right now. Options, I'm gonna turn the enhanced resolution on. Look, it doesn't slow down. What do you think of that, guys and gals? Pretty awesome. So yes, you have more compatibility for HD games. And if you do get a little bit of uh, sluggishness, you can do one little tweak here, which I'll show you in a moment here. If you get like a little bit of hiccups with the sound or stuttering, you can go into options and uh, I don't really need to do this with most games I play, but it is there just in case you need to do it. Go to frame skip and set it to 1. There you go. I wouldn't really go past 1. On some games just do 0 or 1 only. It works the exact same way for the dynamic recompiler configuration on the PPSSP core. Just remember that. I'm going to turn that frame skip off right now. And you can see it's run absolutely fine. But on the uh, Neon plugin, it really does not. So yes, PF's right here. Cleans up the graphical glitches and such, and then of course uh, helps out more games run in HD. Particularly R-Type Delta as a fine prime example. Now we're going to exit back to the main user interface, and we're going to try out these open board uh, games, and hopefully they all work. So we're going to the open board section right here. We'll try Power Rangers Beats of Power. And remember, this does not run via RetroArch. You do not have the ability to go into RetroArch settings. But you can uh, go into settings for the game uh, for open board itself before starting the game. For video uh, aspect ratio and various other settings. I'll show you what I mean right here. Right here, if you go to options before you start the game, you can change a lot of perimeters. Video options, sound options, control options, system options, right there. I'm gonna start the game. I will play the Pink Ranger. So far, so good. We have a game working here. Nice and easy to add. We'll help if I actually push the right button to start the game. It is a two-player mode activate game if you want to be absolutely embarrassed. Just watch Game of Thrones or John Wick 3 to make up for the ridiculousness nature of this afterwards. It's actually a fine, uh, finely designed game though. It actually is pretty interesting. Maybe they'll do an R-rated Power Rangers movie in the conceivable future and make it more akin to the Deadpool violence. Because we all know Deadpool set a precedent as far as uh, glorified violence being in rated R movies instead of every movie trying to be PG-13. I remember when they made uh, the first Blade like uh, rated R and I believe by the time they got to Blade 3 with Ryan Reynolds who was pretty spot on in that movie it was PG-13 if I remember correctly. They're trying to pick up a bigger audience. Okay, we're going to try a different game here. They need to keep these movies rated R. We're going to play a rated R game right now, Splatterhouse. Why not? And yes, the He-Man uh, Masters of the Universe game does work incredibly well. And there are three of these Splatterhouse games, by the way, so... Oh, look, we can play on Torture Mode. We'll play the hardest difficulty and see what happens. And you have different uh, incarnations of him from the first games. I still think he looks a lot like Jason from Friday the 13th. 
I do remember that 2009 uh, Friday 13th remake. I actually liked that movie. They didn't allow the original actor to uh, uh, basically uh, do the role again because they wanted somebody that was even taller than him. I mean, Kane Hunter is pretty tall, but they wanted somebody even taller than him. We need to bring Kane Hunter back. He was such an incredible, worthy uh, person to play him. I believe he showed up in the uh, movie Cabin Fever, though. And he might have been in the movie, uh... I'm trying to think of which movie, yeah. It, it'll come to me in a moment here. I've seen so many horror movies. Wishmaster, that's what it was. Where Wishmaster has Tony Todd, Kane Hodder, and a few other surprise visitors. Them little cameo appearances. Very, very cool game, I'm digging this. And it also has a two-player mode actually. I don't even think the arcade version of Spider House has a two-player mode actually. I'm pretty sure it is a one-player game. It's been a while though. Okay, let's try one of these other games. And I'm gonna use the home button or down select to exit. Uh, we have uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shell Shocked. Hopefully this one works. Big, big TMNT fan all the way back. If you uh, have a chance, go to YouTube and search for the Turtles Forever trailer, which basically does a little bit of a time travel scenario with uh, the original comic strip all the way up to the more current 1990s to 2000s TMNT and even the 1980s ones. This is a very, very cool crossover cartoon movie. Turtle power, come on. And winners don't use drugs. Nice little touch there. Really, this is very, very cool. I meant to pick Donatello. Donatello has always been my favorite to play in the games. So this is one of the other best uh, uh, open board games that I've heard about, but I have not personally tested this one as of yet. You're going to be seeing me play this for the very first time. And I'm really, really hoping the Badass Babes works. I mean, I tried out the normal Episode 1 version and it crashed. But I'm hoping the demo version, which is an earlier version, might actually work. This is pretty spot on. Plays a lot like the Tim and T3 on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. With a little bit of the arcade vibe to it. I remember the very first time I ever saw uh, the Super Nintendo version of uh, Turtles in Time. It absolutely blew my mind with the Mode 7 with the enemies being thrown right out into the uh, forefront of the screen. Very, very cool. Really digging this. And I might actually have uh, Shader on from the last time I was doing my last demonstration of Super Mario Bros. Bro, I'll do that uh, when I get to my next game. Very, very cool. We'll try one more game now. And again, I'm going to show you how to do the video shaders. We're going to try out uh, Badass Babes. Oh, we got Metal Slug Resistance as well. Again, you can change the shaders and filters for the game. I'll show you right now from the main menu. Options. Oh, uh, we're going to video options. And yes, I have it on 16-bit uh, simple times 2. You can go all the way up to uh, 2XI and so on. We're going to have it to 2XI right now. And then I'm going to go to back. And we're going to check this game out, this bad boy out for a moment. Big, big Metal Slug fan. And I'm having faith on this one. That one crashed. I'm going to have to check it out again. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Badass Babe Demo. And I can try another variant of uh, Metal Slug. Because sometimes if you try different build revisions, they might actually work. Uh, this demo seems to be working. <laughs> Let's try this out for a moment. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> the demo for Banished Babes does in fact work. Not sure what to expect here. This is uh, pretty absurd. See what kind of enemies I have to take on here. Loving the Hadouken style music here. Whoa, what's going on there? 
actually pretty impressed with the production values on this one. There's actually a game that's kind of like uh, Streets of Rage that is on uh, Steam that I need to check out called The Takeover. And I really want to check that one out. I might purchase that one. It looks incredibly cool if you look up a trailer for it. We got our scantily clad bikini woman here. Oh, come on. We got our Hanna-Barbera sound effects or something you'd almost expect out of a He-Man cartoon. I definitely gotta get used to this. Maybe I can pick a different character if I get taken down. Got a little bit of dubstep style music going on here. I can dig this. Come on, Skrillex Warrior when you need ya. Is that uh, Harley Quinn in that little thing there? Come on now. Or is that Lady Gaga? Or is that a character from the Dark Crystal? It could be all three of the above. Very, very interesting game. Of course, we need to have some enemy combatants, uh, because we don't want to go through the whole game taking out, uh, turrets and such. I'm sure many of you play games where you have the same recurring enemy the entire game. I don't think this is one of them, though. I'm pretty sure we're going to be running through different enemies here. Okay, area one complete. Let's see what's in the second area. I need to see a different enemy type here. And we had a strip pole at the end there. Oh, there we go. Something out of a Batman movie. Okay, it's getting a little risque there with the girl dancing. We're going to call this one quits because I have a feeling I'm going to be seeing some gratuitous nudity after this point. But definitely check out the demo for Badass Babe.